Las Vegas women. We <laughs> talk about anything. Scorum? <laughs> no, it's Scorum. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a Dutch, so it's, it's really <laughs> difficult. Okay, but all right. So you can you can you, you can say Scorum. Well, I'm gonna uh, say it however you want me to say it. So, yeah, but yeah, but you can. I don't want people to say it. Schorum. Schorum. Okay. Haarsnijder en barbier. <laughs> <laughs> That's Perfect. what I mean. So? Okay. What does it mean? <laughs> it, mean it means pretty much assholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a really bad word, but uh, when, when, you, when you come from Holland, it's a really good name because it's got a little uh, um, a joke of word in it. Because okay. it's also the, the past tense of I shave him. I shaved him. Ik scheer him. Ik schoor him. Okay. Ik schoor him. It's but lost in translation. It's kind of lost in translation, but um, the thing is, when we opened our shop, we had no idea that the shop would be known over the borders of Holland. Because right. then we maybe, well, I don't think we would have given it another name, but of course, you know, nobody in the world can pronounce it. You have to be <laughs> Dutch, maybe German or Belgium to be able to pronounce right. that, 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 especially that first sound, that school. That, 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 that's really hard when you speak English. Awesome. Well, so I think we should just, I think we started. So let's, let's talk about, I want to talk about your shop because it's very interesting to me. I own a salon. Um, you guys are on a wholly, uh, like a completely different side of the industry, but I think the industry is, is trying to combine itself, and which is where I think you guys have blown up in popularity as well. I think hairdressers and barbers alike follow you guys at this point yeah. um so it's an impressive thing to watch and this was sent to me by kiyoshi um from mizutani uh when it first came out i watched the whole thing i loved uh everything you're doing i think a lot of people love it so tell me um right when you started your shop you said you named it um and you didn't really think a lot of people would really know it like it wouldn't be known as well as it is now right actually when we came up with the id most of the people that we knew friends and the family they thought it was the the worst idea ever <laughs> but uh the weird thing is because now we're in america right and right. and we were just really jealous of the american barber uh culture okay you know because your history with barbershops is so much more interesting than it was in um where we come from, you know, it's pretty much the war that killed the barbershop in Holland because, of course, we were bombed and we had to rebuild the country and then you had the hippies and you had the Stones and you had the Beatles. So that's pretty much what was the final blow to the barbershop. So in Holland, there were no barbershops left. Okay. But we definitely uh, looked at America. We looked at Turkey. We, we, we kind of we dove into the history of the barbershop. Right. And as I always say, I mean, I mean, we stole a lot of ideas from you guys, you know, but we combined it right. with the history of the barbershop in uh, Holland, France, Belgium. You know, we, we just wanted to know as much uh, as there was to know about barbershops. And, and then when we opened that shop, I mean, this was like the worst the business plan ever. Because what we did normally, when you open a salon or, or a shop or whatever, you're 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 looking at what the, what what the client might want, right? right. I yeah. mean, that's that's where you base your ideas on. And what we did is, <laughs> because we have been entrepreneurs for a very very long time. He had his first shop when he was sixteen. Sixteen. He had his first oh, wow. yeah. shop. You know, I was eighteen when I opened my first uh, a salon. So we learned a lot, and what I find really interesting is that we we started we we started with men's hair, okay. you know, and then we took that huge detour, learned about women's hair, learned about being on stage, learned about education, just to return to what we love doing the most and why we got started in the first place. Right. And when we opened that shop in the beginning, we we really wanted to open like an American barber shop, like a jukebox and. Uh, and everything and then we found um, the back bar that we have that was like 120 years old handcrafted and especially the fact that it was handcrafted by 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 uh, a carpenter a master uh, a carpenter for for us that that kind of changed the view that we had on the shop that we wanted to make okay because Schorum to us it's like the ultimate place where we would like to go to right so we skipped the whole 
what a client might want. So we had like really loud music and we had, we had a stupid name for the shop. I mean, when we went to the Chamber of Commerce, they were just like, <laughs> you cannot call your shop assholes. You, you, you just can do, it. I think they actually looked it up if it was okay <laughs> by, by law, if you can call right. it, because it was, yeah. it's a horrible name. In Holland, it's a horrible yeah, name. Yeah, because no one in America would call their shop assholes. No, it, no, no right. it didn't make any right. sense. But since there is a little joke to it, because Schorum, uh, you know, and it's a really bad word. When I called my mother <laughs> and I said, we found the name of the shop, it's going to be Schorum. She cried a little. She did. She <laughs> did. She was like, I don't want anybody to call my son Schorum. So I told mom, they've been doing that for years you know but no <laughs> it's like the scum of the nation but okay. it also is the past tense of i shave him so i shaved him him so so and and because we were we 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 kind of had an image with the white jackets and everything and then being called schorum it it kind of it kind of yeah. makes sense because you know and it worked and then it all came together yeah, and yeah. Then we had this beautiful shop with all the antiques because we went we went absolutely nuts on the antiques at a, a, a certain point we would drive four hours to get um, uh, a light uh, a socket that was made out of um, the backlight isn't it funny though like I think a lot of people like would maybe look at what you've done look at your shop um, and basically the, like the image that you guys portray but then realize that you actually drove four hours to get a light socket like it's it's actually really well put together like you yeah. put thought into every, even though it's it it's kind of like a, I don't know what the word would be, but like uh, it looks like you didn't take a lot of time to do it, but every piece it took a long exactly, time. and it that's what I love really, about it. It took a really it long like time, years. but 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 what you got to understand is that we um, we put a lot of time and effort in it. But I think the most important thing is we put love in it. Yeah. you know because yeah. we fun. we yeah. especially fun. Yeah. There was a lot of fun and, and, and a lot of love because we would be so happy with like a small old can or, you know, and we would be like, we would actually drive for, I mean, we got so many, because barbering, it's not just about hair, it's about storytelling. Yeah. It's the same with your, uh, your Facebook, your Instagram, you know, you want to tell a story to the people and especially with guys, you know, I mean, that is the, that, that, that's the, ma that's the core of the barbershop. You tell stories together. And I mean, when we opened that shop, I mean, at one point we really wanted to have a crocodile. I, don't ask me why like we a real crocodile. No, we wanted to have like a stuffed crocodile <laughs> because you know, for us, when you, when you, when you, when you read about wizards and blah blah, there's always a crocodile. It's a a mystic thing. So yeah. Lane found one on the internet. Now. It's impressive. Yeah. So, but the thing is, it's not we that impressive. Uh, no, 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 no. Because because the thing is, we we saw the crocodile, right? And we were all excited. And it was way up north. Like we had to be in uh, in the car for three hours. I know in America that's nothing, but in Holland that's pretty much from the south to the north. It's, okay. It's pretty. It's it's pretty far. So, we rented a van to pick up the crocodile, right? And we drove for three and. The, and the crocodile got bigger and bigger, you know, in our heads. And we were just <laughs> like, you know, I, 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 I don't have a driver's uh, a license. So I was just being slightly drunk in the, in the car because but we had we rented to rented the car because my car, was, I got a big car, but we okay. thought it was too small. So, but in our heads, the crocodile got bit and we were like, oh, maybe we have to, <laughs> it has to be in the ceiling like and blah, blah, gonna lift and, it? And, yeah. and then finally we arrive at the house. The guy opens the door and there is a crocodile in the hallway <laughs> <laughs> and we go like that better you better have the father <laughs> upstairs and he was like no 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 this is the cro and we, so we we had a van and we put the <laughs> crocodile in the middle and we're like Fuck. that's great but you know so there's a story to every little thing in that shop in the shop yeah yeah and I, I th yeah it's important man it's about so tell me about that culture that you're talking about so you talk about the american cult culture of barber shops and what do you think it's if you combine um, that old American culture and, and just the culture of barbering in general with what it's like right now, uh, what do you think is the big difference? I think that we lost the art of having a conversation with a total stranger. I think, I think that when you look at the barbershop, the, 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 the psychology behind the barbershop is so much more important than just the haircuts. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have to create an environment that, I mean, the shop that we got, it's our shop. It fits like a glove. So yeah. I feel a thousand percent myself in that shop, you know, and that's, and that's going to work. The people will feel that. And we 
think i mean don't get me wrong we 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 love the 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 history of the american barbershop but right. we're but we're not american we're not no. trying to be american right. or nothing you know we 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 really we had like uh, so many friends that 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 wore the haircuts that we like to do and everything you know and but we discovered the the real magic of the barbershop at the moment we opened the doors right because we saw what was happening people started to talk to each other again people that didn't know each other right and um the society has changed so much without us even realizing how much it changed because people are living their lives on their Instagram pages and everything right. where you only show the, the good stuff. You know, you don't talk about the bad stuff because you don't want the people to know. But somehow in that barbershop, you will talk about the bad stuff as well because you're amongst the guys. Right. And back in the days, the barbershop was called a third place in a society, you know, yeah. and, and, and the people need that. But things have changed. I mean, so many uh, of the people now, uh, back in the day, you had like your circle, right? You had like uh, your house, your friends, the family. It was all close together. But now the people either travel for work right. or they stay at home working, you know? I yeah. mean, the people, without even knowing it, you know, you're, you're spending so much time not having uh, a social interaction anymore. And a barbershop is one of those places that 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 still ha it's it's a natural thing. It's it's the lifeblood of the society that right. you actually talk to each other. But we forgot about places like that because if you go to a bar with your friends, yeah, well, you still want to be the coolest guy in the bar. You know, there's women there, and I mean, you know, it's it's a right. different thing. You don't have to show off in a barbershop. In a barbershop, right? your colors fall away. Nobody gives a fuck about how much you make in the end of the month, where you come from, right. you know, and you're there for the same thing. Plus, a lot of guys didn't really, I mean, I think the barbershop is is a place where, 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 where getting a haircut, you know, getting a haircut was not fun anymore because they went to a salon you know, and guys don't know a lot about their hair. And the rules, the social rules in a hair salon for guys, is they're, it's pretty a complicated thing. When there is a woman over here with, with foils in her hair up to there, Right. most guys have no idea what's happening. They're like, oh, Jesus, you know. And that's not, in, and in a barbershop, that's not happening, right? right? Plus, yeah. in a bar, I mean, when you're in a salon, the chair uh, is facing the mirror so you're creating little islands in a shop you know and you're building a band of trust with your client so don't get me wrong that's that's not that's that's not a bad thing right right yeah. because a lot of people want that that thing because they know blah blah we turn the chairs around so the people getting a haircut are actually facing Talking the people to so yeah you, you you do not tell a joke to your client you tell a joke to the, to the room yeah and there is always this guy that knows a better joke right, right. so you get so it's completely different, and I think I think those places were needed again. Yeah. Right. And now we see the whole, um, well, the 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 maybe the renaissance of the barbershop because there's so and and we can only we can only be happy about that because yeah. guys should have have to be able to choose whether they want to go to a salon or to a barbershop, you know. And a barbershop, it's a different, it's a place where everybody will know your name. Right. And how long have you had your shop? Five and a half years? Yeah. That's crazy. That's insane. That's insane growth. It feels like In 25. Uh, oh, I know. I've had mine for seven. And yeah. Well, we had this shop, but we had shop before You had a shop that before that. Because well, you, you started when you were 16, right? The stuff that we did uh, in the five and a half years, it, I think a lot of people put that in 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's something that... So you now... I want to get into the products because I we sell these in my salon. I love everything about the products, but I don't know what those are. So I'm excited to hear about that. Um, so tell me, uh, the products launched, it's Ruzel. Yeah. I got that one. Yeah, well, and it, <laughs> it's, it's actually Ruzel, but, oh, but, 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 but Ruzel is also okay. a Dutch right, right, name. All right. <laughs> and that actually really sounds good in German. Yeah. Ruzel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, um, so you, we, you launched with these two, yeah. right? And so tell me, wh why did you do it? Why, why start the products? 
Well, one of the problems that we had, I mean, again, in America, there is a lot of really cool, small brands of, uh, of pomades. Uh, but in the beginning, when we started the shop, it was really hard to come by those products okay. a lot of times. And the thing with guys is once they're used to a product, they want to want to they want to keep using that product. Yeah. And for us, it was starting to become a problem because with some brands, they were actually made in 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 a shed in the in the backyard. Yeah. Right. So we tried to order that, and we never had had the products. Okay. Now, uh, so this is pretty much. Some, sometimes they couldn't deliver like for six months or eight months. Uh, that was really shitty. Yeah, yeah, that's not good for business. No, right. no, no, and it was turning into a problem. And the funny thing is, the because we, of course, first of all, we we wanted to open an American barbershop, blah blah blah, and we were looking for an English name that didn't work out. And then on one night we found the name Schorum, which was perfect. And well, the thing that we did because we were so happy that we found the name is we got drunk. <laughs> and that same night, we actually said as a joke, a complete joke, we said, well, maybe if one day we are going to make a, a pomade, we're going to call it Rusel because it means lard, right? And we thought it would be hilarious if somebody would say, oh, man, I got lard in my hair, you know? <laughs> but again, we had no idea that 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 that, that stuff was going to happen because the people all said, like, Schorem, no, a shop with a name like that's never going to work. But that worked out perfectly. So we yeah. were like, oh, man, we got to make the pomade. I can't wait to hear what you name the next project. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me about the products. So yeah, um, we got like uh, w w for us, it was really important to come out with an old school grease based yeah. pomade. Now, the weird thing is this will never be the best seller, but we would have not done our brand without a, a, a real grease because right. our haircuts are based on an era of time that that was before the chemical revolution people right. did not know how to make gel or hairspray that's why when you watch old movies guys always look good because they got greased up hair slicked back you know and that those haircuts will look good in 200 years right, right. yeah so for us that was the most important thing we did realize that we have to have a water base that's easy to wash out because that's the problem with grease right it's right. hard to wash out that's why we got the hair tonic i'll get back to that okay but um you know we our shop and haircuts are based on on the real grease because um, the water based it's a pomade but it's not a grease right because you can wash it out but for the clients this is way easier to use so we right. like to say we got like we got like old school and we got new school yeah, yeah. which is good because you have to teach the, the people your clients how to use the product Right. right so these were the first products that we came out with and then we came out because this is my personal uh, a favorite is this one yeah right i, I mean we sell the shit out of the red and the blue yeah because the blue is pretty much the red on steroids right so it's stronger it's doing really uh, well um in asia you know it's like really when you got when you when you got really straight hair and really works really good okay. and then we wanted of course um uh, a strong pink and this is my this is my favorite you know yeah. you can do pretty much every hairstyle with it but it's even harder to get out of the hair right but yeah. for me uh you know the buildup of the grease is going to make the hair look even better yeah. because if you got grease in your hair for a couple of days, it just it goes into the hair. So you respect the natural fall and wave of the hair. You just learn to play with it because, you know, it has to move. Right. So that was the cool thing about the pomades. We're okay. coming out with two more, like a matte and uh, a fiber uh, a pomade. Oh, nice. So both new school, a bit more easier to use if you do not want to go for the greasy look. Okay. Uh, also we both water-based. Both water-based. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So easy to wash out. Um, we got beard products. This one is pretty oh, re nice. re revolutionary because uh, it's a beard foam. It's a conditioner. Okay. Yeah. So it makes your beard swell up a little bit. So it's it's actually a foam, and I'm pretty sure it's the only one on the market. It's really cool stuff. We put Mr. Edward Teach on on the label nice. so that's black beard you know and black beard was the most notorious uh, a, pi oh, a pirate in a <laughs> <laughs> most notorious the, the, the pirate in history sorry about that uh, not my table <laughs> okay so it's the most notorious pirate in history and the funny thing is because people like to say about home it's all smoke and mirrors yeah yeah maybe it is you know i mean we we definitely marketed an image yeah yeah but that's exactly what blackbeard did because uh, when you read the history books which i love history he scared people 
he scared people to surrender just by looking like that. He actually didn't kill the um, the the guys on the ships. He, uh, he so he I, I, I them. yeah, just right. intimidating. Yeah. I love, I, I really love that. So well, that's then, what's funny. So uh, with saying that, well, the funny thing is, like when you guys walked up. So I've only seen this. Yeah, I've heard stories, and I know your products. I know your image. When you guys walked up, I was like. Are these the same guys? You're Stab very it. like, very like, you were smiling bigger than anybody I've ever seen, and you're just like happy and and you know very of outgoing. Course. So it's cool. It's of just, course it's we're we're living the dream. I mean, we <laughs> right. never, never, ever expected to to become a success. I mean, we're right. two, we're two screw ups, and you know what I really like about the product and the shop is. We f we follow our guts. We're just like, oh, this feels good. Let's do it, you yeah. know. And it's the same with. And some stuff is just stupid, but because it's stupid, it's fun. I mean, on the aftershave, we have a guillotine <laughs> because that's the closest shave you can get, right? right? So for us, and we go like, oh, can we do that? Yeah, because if you think too long about an ID, yeah. then it gets too polished and everything. You know, it's the same with the pig. I mean, yeah. but the the what is the pig? The, the power of well, the pig. Bacon fat. Okay. Because lard. it's because it's lard. it's rusel, so it's lard, you know. And lard is like like the most horrible thing in the world. They used lard in <laughs> in the war to make it easier to 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 swallow old bread, you know. I, I mean, it's a horrible product, and yeah. they baked shit in it. It's like the most greasiest, fattest, <laughs> dirtiest shit in the world. But you know what? You know, and I told you before, we stole from everybody, right? Now right. I have an example. There is a movie called Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Okay. Yeah. Have you seen it? I have. From, from the Coen Brothers. Yeah. So George Clooney uses Dapper Dan pomade. Yeah. I don't want fop. God damn it! I'm a Dapper Dan man. Yeah. So the Coen Brothers made the most uh, famous pomade in the world that did not exist. Right. So that really inspired us, and we got an original can of Dapper Dan from the movie, a movie prop on eBay. Okay. Now you know what's in the ingredients of Dapper Dan, which is a fictional ingredient. Alaskan seal fat, yeah, baby seal. <laughs> baby seal fat. So can you imagine just right, right, yeah, yeah. And we were like, oh man, these guys, these guys, that is that is just brilliant. And yeah. we knew that the first uh, pomades were made out of animal fat, so we were like, okay, it's a wink to to back in the day because the first uh, oint, oint, ointments, ointments, yep. yeah, Ointment, they yeah. were made out of animal fat and they were used to close the wounds after the bloodletting and um, the leaching which of course got infected blah 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 and that's how a product kind of evolves and became a hair product right and it smelled really rancid so they used apples to cover that rancid smell and that's where the name comes from the mm. french word for apple is pom pomade that's why the pink and the green smell like apple you know because it's about storytelling hey nice. gordon what's up gordon <laughs> so <laughs> 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 in a very natural way <laughs> yeah. it's very good nobody noticed <laughs> so, so that's 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 pretty much how you, you see so i mean you can call it inspiration you can c call it plain stealing it doesn't matter because right. we we just gave it our own twist and we have a lot of fun making coming up with ideas you know i mean and 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 we are not afraid to make a fool out of ourselves have have, have you seen my pin what <laughs> what what does it say one of those I, yeah well i can't i don't want to mess up the word again try Schorum. what is it Schorum sucks <laughs> and what does it say under it fucking hipsters fucking hipsters yeah that's what people like to call us to 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 bring us down yeah. okay well if you like to say that i'll make a pin for you <laughs> you know you can put it yeah. who's saying this 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 is what I, so i don't so there is a whole world so i well, i accidentally put out a men's haircut yeah and uh and this was like when i first started making videos two and a half years ago the video because of the popularity of men's cutting i'm not even a, a barber i don't consider myself a men's cutter really got five million views on youtube and it's a nightmare. I still don't take it down because it has 5 million views. But every <laughs> single day, there's horrible, yeah. hateful things being yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So tell me, like, so... Well, you know what? In the beginning, when we first had the shop, it kind of hurt my feelings when, when the people were putting it down. But yeah. first of all, when we made those posters, right, 
I was looking for a model with a beard. This is five years ago. It took me three weeks to find a model with a beard. Now, okay. if I need a model without a beard, it's going to take me three weeks. <laughs> right. But, you know, that whole movement with the hipsters and the beards and everything, I think we, I think, I, first of all, we, have, we are the two luckiest motherfuckers in the world, right? right. I mean, we start this shop. And we were we were at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Doing the right, right? thing. Right. Yep. Everybody else could have done the same thing, but we were there, and we had no idea that this whole thing would was gonna explode with the beards and shit. Right. Right. Because we just opened that shop to to cut our friends. We just wanted to have fun. Now, then people, the hateful things, you know, because. People go about that hipster thing. But for me, a barbershop is open for everybody. So I don't care if you're a hipster or a punk or psychobilly or gay or, you know, if you're a guy, you're going to get a haircut. Right. Right. And by realizing that, it was kind of easy to let all the hateful things just slip away yeah. because you know i'm just doing my job i love doing my job if you look at the dvd you can see we actually really enjoy doing haircuts yeah. and if there's a, a little bit of advice in that whenever somebody tries to put you down or behave man just you know i mean the thing that i have uh when they rea react on my facebook page or whatever fucking hips blah blah i said but yeah here you are on my page checking out what i'm doing <laughs> you right. know your yeah. haters are your biggest fans yeah right yeah. i mean the people that spend all the time on your page going like i hate this i hate that man they're spending time in you yeah right true so that sounded really strange <laughs> they're spending time <laughs> in you, spending oh. you. <laughs> So tell oh, me, sorry. Tell me, um, that's fine. We're, we're good. This is not... No, it's like, you, you know, I it's, mean... I, get, I totally get what you're saying, and I, uh, and, I, and I respect that because it is the way... I think a lot of people get... They fall into the trap of maybe not doing something because they feel like somebody's going to knock them down or feel like they're copying somebody. I've never really... Like, for me, I take inspiration from everyone, and I love uh, being able to put my twist on it. That's, so and but, I, that's but that, cool to hear that that's what you guys are doing. And. That's it. And you know what? I think Schorem is so, uh, it's a really trans, um, apparent shop. You know, we, we, we try to be honest about, about everything. You know, right. the haircuts are honest because when you look at, um, when you look at the trade, uh, craftsmanship, I, 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 I always like to say, um, you, you cannot lie with your hands, right? right. Yeah. So in the end, because, I mean, again, we're really lucky. We travel, and, and we had no idea, you know, because the first time that we had to, to go on stage for, I mean, I was shitting myself. I mean, I, I, I never chose to, to do that, right, you know? Yeah. It kind of happened to us, but, man, I was scared shitless, you know, because I'm just used to being behind the chair with my client. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you, you have to be honest to yourself. Uh, is it still the thing I want to do? But in the end, you know, it's all about the client. You know, even for us, still, it's all about the client. I want every client to leave that shop feeling good about himself and his experience yeah. in the shop. Just never, ever forget about that, you know, because that is the core of the shop. And uh, there's a that there, I mean, you know what? It's the other thing. I mean, you want your client to look good when right. he leaves the shop yeah. but you want him to look great when he leaves the house yeah. right so you got to drop your ego you're not doing your haircut for anybody else it's just for your client yeah. i mean if he can reproduce that same haircut and feel good about himself man you've done a great job that's why we got started in this business in the first place we took this to the max on time but I appreciate you guys. <laughs> the cameras are shutting off. That's never happened in an interview before. <laughs> so this, was, this is a one record. question, and, and this you know was what? one answer. If it was gonna happen on anyone, I'm glad it was you guys. Thank you uh, for doing this. Is there anything else? These are all new products, though. I, yeah. I definitely They're do. Actually, not that new. So you got a So why do rep. I not have them? <laughs> Kyoshi, what? <laughs> The groom, Yoshi. the grooming tonic. Yeah. This is this is pretty much our best product. Okay. You know, you can use this uh, before you apply heat, before blow drying. You can use it as uh, a tonic just to groom your hair if you want a light hold. Okay. Uh, you can use it over the pomades for extra shine. It's this this one this one came out better than we expected actually because <laughs> that's the same. Yeah, but that's what I, I mean. About, mean. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I mean about being honest. You get all these testers. You know what you want, and then in the end you're like this 
pretty much it. Yeah. But then when this came out, and we found because we made it just to have like um, a tonic uh, to blow dry with, because we wanted to have a bit of hold, yeah. because that's how we work. We we cut the hair wet, then we dry, and then we we finish. Yeah. But then we found out it's so much better than than what we actually wanted to have. Okay. And and that's super cool. You know, awesome. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's great. Because we didn't know anything about making products as well. I actually cooked up the first can of Rusel in the kitchen you and did? I totally fucked up. <laughs> oh my God, you have no idea. Yeah, I mean, you can, it's a it's a process and it's funny because you, you look at, like if you YouTube how to make a pomade, it's like, though, these kids are making it with like four ingredients. But yeah. then you look at like, what it really takes to make something that lasts, you know, yeah. there is a lot of science. To yeah, it. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest. Like I, there are a few home brewers that, that make really pomades with four ingredients that are absolutely amazing. You awesome. know, and I, I mean, I love that. I mean, yeah. I love, I love the fact that because of the barbering, that all these small uh, companies are are doing so good with their beer oils, with their, yeah. you know, that's that's great. Like you got got well, almost kids that become yeah, entrepreneurs are, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I i i actually really like that very cool so if people want to check out the product is there can they go to um www.ruzelpomate.com really i repeat www.ruzelpomate.com kids that's good yeah and they can get a rep they can get a rep. A good they rep. They need a rep. A good rep. <laughs> a good rep. You need a good rep. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Is there anything else you want to put out there? I think you. No, I think I think we pretty much. <laughs> I think you put it. <laughs> don't, don't, just stop. <laughs> well, thank you guys. For thank you so down. much, so, man. This so was, nice this, to meet you guys. This, this was really nice. Yeah, this very was a really cool. Fun interview. All right, guys. Thank you to American Salon Magazine for hooking up this interview. We are at the Cosmoprof. What are we at? Gordon, where are we at? We're at Cosmoprof North America, right outside of Beacon. Cosmoprof North America in Vegas, right outside of PBA Beacon, Beacon. which the student program. The, oh, is that what that is? PBA Beacon. Beacon. Beacon is the best students in America. All right. So awesome. Good thing we were very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you guys so much. Thank you to American Slime. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you.